Okay. Just going to show you why Snell's law works the way it does and where it actually comes from. So let's picture light going from a medium like air or a vacuum where the index is one. So it's moving at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second and moving into a slower medium. Let's say it's water. N equals 1.33. And we've already come to the conclusion, we've seen that that light is going to bend towards the normal as it goes into that new medium, into the water. This theta one is our angle of incidence, and this theta two is our angle of refraction. And we wanna be able to find out the relationship between those two based upon these two indices. And it isn't as bad as you would think. First of all, let's think about how far the wave moves in a period of time. We know that in a certain period of time, it's gonna move that one wavelength. And that distance is gonna be equal to whatever the velocity of that wave is times its time. Now, as it moves into the new medium, it slows down, the wavelength gets shorter and bends towards the normal. Now, over here, this would be the distance of that new wavelength. It would be velocity two times time, and it would be in the same amount of time to move from here to here as it does to move from here to here. They're both part of the same waves and it's the same amount of time. So let's think about this for a second. Well, we're going to have to play around with our angles a little bit. This theta 2 here is exactly the same thing as theta 2 right there. It's like taking this right triangle, that right angle, then just twisting it an angle theta two over. It's the same exact angle. And this angle theta one, which happens to be right here, happens to be the same exact angle as over there, theta one, which means we've got a right triangle right there and we've got another right triangle right there. So we're comparing those two right triangles. One of them is right here And the other one is right over here. Now, one thing we can tell is that for both of these right triangles, this line right here is the hypotenuse for both of those triangles. And that's what's going to make this all work out very nicely for us. Let's think about this for a second. We've got a right triangle. I've got the hypotenuse. This is the side opposite the hypotenuse. So I happen to know that the sine for theta 1 is equal to my opposite over my hypotenuse. I'm going to slide that back up there a little bit. Okay. So that means my sine the theta one is gonna be equal to, well, my opposite happens to be equal to this D one, which is my velocity one times time over my hypotenuse. There's my first one. Now let's think about the next one, which is this theta two over here. Well, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. Do it over here. Sine of theta two equals opposite over my hypotenuse. Sine of theta two is gonna be equal to my opposite, which in this case, opposite that is my velocity two times my time, all divided by h. Now in both these cases, h is gonna be the same. So let's rearrange these. h is equal to velocity one, over, rise one times time over it, sine theta one, and h is equal to, and we're just doing a little algebra here, nothing too bad, velocity two times time over sine theta two. Set them equal to each other. h is the same for both of these. Velocity one times time over sine theta one equals velocity two times time over sine theta two. Well, hold on for a second. The times are the same. Get rid of those. Now we happen to know that 
because we're dealing with the indices of refraction, we happen to know that our index of refraction is equal to the speed of light divided by the velocity. Or I can rearrange that. My velocity is equal to my speed of light divided by the index. And I'm going to put this in here for both of these velocities. So here we go. C over N divided by sine theta 1 is equal to C over N, and that should be N1, by the way, N2 over sine theta 2. Now we can bring that down. We can get rid of the C's, which both become 1's. The N's can go to the bottom. They're both in the uh, denominators. And we can just reciprocal both sides, and we're left with Snell's Law. Okay, just wanted to show you, we can just pull this out of midair, that Snell's Law can be worked out geometrically. Thank you very much.